awkward, I know. Leave me alone. <laughs> so you wanna to move to Prague. Here's how I did it, and here's kind of the story behind it. When I was in Vancouver, I was looking to move to Vancouver Island, and <clears throat> I had found a place, I had found a job, I was all set, I was ready to go. I paid my damage deposit, I paid my first month's rent, and I was on my way. Uh, I went to pick up my keys and uh, meet my new roommate in person, and when I went there, we had a good time, we met, we had a couple beers, and then that turned into us going out on the town for the night. Uh, which was really fun actually. I met quite a few people. I really enjoyed that night in Victoria. I slept at the unit that I was going to rent and it was a bit of a nightmare. Couches everywhere. It was not uh, ideal, but basically what was promised was a guy was going to move out and I would take over the whole place. Found out later that I wasn't even allowed to sublet and that he was breaking the law by letting me live there. So I grabbed the keys uh, stayed there the night. The next morning I went out for uh, lunch with a buddy of mine. We ended up going to a bar that we were at the night before and found out that the guy uh, who I was supposed to move in with had gotten himself into some trouble at that bar that morning. He had spiked the beer glass on the bar, threw stools around, threatened the staff, and basically was a fucking tyrant in the that morning. So logically I decided that that probably wasn't the best place for me to live. Uh, unfortunately because it was an amazing apartment uh, downtown right in the center of Victoria and if you don't know what Victoria looks like it is picturesque. It's beautiful, it's right on the ocean, it's south close to Seattle, you can take a ferry there whenever you want. But I decided I didn't want to live with this dude. So, go back to Vancouver, uh, he refuses to give me my money back for my damage deposit and one uh, first month's rent, so I kind of took to Instagram and I put him on blast. Anyways, long story short, I got my money back. But, the problem was I still didn't have a place to live, I still didn't have a place to go. So I'm sitting on Instagram after being incredibly frustrated trying to find a place to live, and I was coming down to the last few days of my lease. I, I was probably at about two weeks before I had to leave. So I'm sitting on Instagram, scroll through, and I, an ad pops up for a barbershop, the Canadian barbershop, which is located in Prague. And I decide, why the fuck not? Let's just message him, see what happens. See if, if by some fucking miracle, I can find my way out of Canada to Prague in two weeks. <laughs> so I ended up messaging him and was like, hey man, uh, I saw you were looking for Canadian barbers. Unfortunately, I don't live in Prague, but it'd be uh, really cool if I did. And at that point, we ended up scheduling an interview and having a conversation. So we ended up doing Skype for about a half an hour and we both liked each other. We both, uh, you know, we talked about what our views are on barbering, how long we've been doing it, what our goals are, why I would want to move to Prague, how I would move to Prague, um, how much time I would need to get there, um, if I could get there immediately or if it would take six months. So after the conversation, uh, we decided that I could be there within 10 days. Obviously without a visa, but that would come in time. So 10 days later, after visiting my family, packing up my apartment, getting rid of 99% of what I owned, I was on a plane. And I had never been to Europe before. The longest flight I had ever been on was five hours, and I was traveling to a completely different side of the world, nine hour time difference away from where I lived. Um, and I, I had no fucking clue what I was doing end up landing in Frankfurt and I stayed there for about eight hours on a layover. I land in Prague <clears throat> and at this point Eric, the owner of the Canadian Barbershop and I had never seen each other in person, never spoken in person, just over Skype. Um, 
so the, there was a lot of trust between the two of us. There was uh, me trusting him to not fuck me over in a completely different country and him trusting me not to fuck him over after all the effort that he put in to get me out here. So he drives me home, we end up having a beer, you know, talking, meeting each other. And then this is where kind of the problems started. Um, problems as in visa requirements for me to work. I brought about 3,000 Canadian when I came here, which um, I'll, I'll put here somewhere how much it costs or how, how much it uh, exchanges to. So with the exchange rate, I had quite a bit of money to stay here. I had quite a bit of money to survive, pay my rent, buy groceries and live because it's about per one Canadian dollar, it's about 18 Czech crowns. Just before I came, there were a lot of chores that I had to do to get out here. Um, so if you're ever interested in getting a visa done, it really doesn't take that much time if you do it right. So the chores that I still had to do when I was in Canada were get a police background check, a uh, federal police criminal background check. I had to sign over power of attorney to my mother so that she could handle things from Canada on my behalf. Um, and then I had to get an international driver's license, which kind of was a waste because I haven't been able to use it here uh, yet. Um, so anyways, <clears throat> getting the criminal background check, I had to go to the Vancouver Police Department. I had to pay them a bunch of money, get my fingerprints done, um, and then that all had to get sent to Ottawa. Ottawa. Once that was sent to Ottawa, it was just a waiting game. I had to wait for the criminal background to come back clean, uh, get that notarized by an approved notary, somebody that they trust. So I get it approved by the notary. That has to then be sent to the district attorney's office in Victoria to be approved of the approval. Stay with me. So the approval of the approval has to be done uh, in order to send it to the embassy who then super legalizes your criminal background check. With that, after the approval of the approval and a waiting game, waiting for everything to come through, you have to send it to the Czech embassy in Ottawa, then they approve the approval of the approval, and then they send it to an embassy out here. The embassy that we chose for me to, to work with to get my visa was in Warsaw, Poland. So I've actually been to Warsaw three times, two times, two times. Uh, that's a 10 hour train ride there and a 10 hour train ride back. So it's a long, long two days just to go there and hand in paperwork, come back, go back there, um, hand it or pick up my visa. So it took quite a bit. Uh, of time and energy, a little bit of money to get it done. And that was probably the biggest headache when you're trying to get your visa for Europe or for the Schengen region or the EU, uh, at least here. Um, the second thing was we hired basically somebody that deals with that kind of paperwork, somebody that um, does this for a living, writing out visa applications for people. Um, as well as getting them translated because they won't deal with anything in English at the Czech Embassy um, or in the Czech Republic. Everything has to be translated when it's dealing with the government has to be translated to Czech, which is a fucking nightmare. Anyways, we get that translated, send all the paperwork in. I had to get a passport photo taken so that they could um, put it on my visa and I had to set up a rental agreement um, and I had to um, prove that I had everything in order to move here and work. It did turn out to be quite the process. I'm glad that it's over now, but on my way back from Poland, literally the day that I got my visa slip put into my passport, I ended up losing it on the train. I left it there, so we had hiccup number one, which took a fuck of a long time for me to figure out how to get a new passport, time frame, cost, all of that shit. Making a coffee.
know what you're thinking. Cream and sugar in a coffee in Europe? Are you fucking crazy? That's how I roll, baby. So I lose my passport. I have to get a brand new passport, which costed 400 Canadian dollars. I had to go to an embassy here, which surprisingly, most of the people that work at the embassy here are Czech. What I wanted to say was the difference between Canada and the US for getting a visa in the Czech Republic is, look how awkward my fucking hand is. Oof. Uh, the difference is, as a Canadian, you have to go through all this process. As an American, what you have to do is you have to walk into an embassy, you have to swear an oath. I, Colby Mudge, do not have a criminal record. Okay, cool, you're good. That's literally all Americans have to do to come here. So if you're an American looking to get a fucking visa for the Czech Republic, literally that's it. You have to fill out the paperwork like I did but you literally just have to swear an oath. So you don't have to go through a notary. You don't have to send it to the district attorney. You don't have to send that to an embassy in Ottawa. You don't have to get biometrics done when you're in your country. And you don't have to deal with any of the fucking headache that comes along with them believing that you're not a criminal. There's a guy in here with gel all over his hair earlier. Now his hair is stuck to my beautiful floors. Everywhere. Jeez, man. <sighs> so it does take quite a while. But once it's done, it's fucking done. And at that point, you're basically treated like anybody else in the EU. You're allowed to travel wherever you want. Um, no visas required. I think I need to swap visas if I want to change workplaces, but this is my home while I'm here. So I will be with Canadian Barbershop for quite a while. So like I said, it does take time, but it is worth it. And if you have any questions about getting your visa in the Czech Republic from a Canadian, let me know. Um, I could actually even hook you up with the lady that I used to get my visa. I can give you a guide step-by-step -step on how to get a job how to apply for your visa, where to get your documents sent, addresses, phone numbers, whatever you need. I went through it, it was a fucking headache. I think with me on your side, you can get it done a whole lot easier and a lot less hectic. Um, and remember, don't lose your fucking passport halfway through your visa application. So anyways, that's me. That's my coffee. Like I said, any questions, anything like that, let me know. I am planning on making a bunch of other videos on processes, changes, differences between here and Canada. And uh, I would really appreciate it if you gave this a thumbs up and maybe a subscribe if you like my content. If you don't, tell me. Write a note in the comments, call me a fucking idiot. And I appreciate it and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers.